right my dear children now in the earlier chapter we discussed about life cycles of organisms and uh, we good uh, we got a go good knowledge what uh, what do you mean by a life cycle right in the earlier chapter just by commonly by taking different kinds of organisms plants and animals both we discussed what do you mean by a life cycle and we defined what a life cycle is now within this chapter we'll be discussing about the life cycle of organisms right within this chapter we'll be discussing about life cycle of organisms but specially we are considering only one type of an organism now in the earlier chapter we discussed about several organisms also with the plant uh, also with organisms he here in the sense in the earlier chapter with plants and animals both but however within this chapter we'll be discussing only about the animals right we'll be taking several animals and we'll be identifying several stages which contain within their life cycle right so my dear children within this chapter we'll be studying about the life cycles of animals life cycles of animals so like in the previous activity which we did to identify the life cycles of organisms he also will be needing several images and video clips regarding to the life cycles of animals okay in the early also we took the same thing but however if there are new organisms then we'll go for the image uh, video clips and images for those organisms or those animals there are new ones okay right so you'll be needing definitely some images of life stages in different animals okay it's better if you can find out these animals because in these animals we can identify clear stages okay animals like what animals like butterfly frog cockroach mosquito rat and human so butterfly frog cockroach mosquito rat and human at least these at least like you know these guys butterfly frog mosquito rat human we'll ignore about the rat or human we studied about the rat thing earlier no so human and cockroach however all of these images right if you take each of these animals all of these images are given within your textbook so you won't be any you'll be, you'll be no you'll you will not be needing any extra things to find out within this lesson part however if you can find out something special then it's better to find out those things also by using newspapers articles or any other books okay right so these are the things that we need will be needing life cycles of butterfly frog cockroach mosquito rat and human try to find these things actually those things are given in your textbook also but if you can try to find some extra images and good you know uh, like well developed good images if you can find then it is much more easier to identify their stages and also if you can find out some video clips regarding these life stages then it would be much more easier to study about their life cycles so then what do you have to do it's really simple we have to observe the life cycles when and identify the special characteristics of each stages of animals so we have to observe the life cycle and we have to first of all develop the life cycle of each animal 
by completing their stages like in the previous activity like in the previous chapter in the previous activity we develop the life cycle by using different stages in the same way you have to develop the life cycle by looking at the image was given okay then my dear children what do you have to do we have to identify the special characteristics of each stage now now as there are different stages for each and every stage you have to find out the character special characteristics for each and every stage what are the special characteristics that we can observe what are the special features that we can observe okay for each and every stage okay for each and every stage now we are going to discuss in detail what are the special features what are the special characteristics okay then tabulate your observations depending on the differences of shapes patterns of the different stages now we need to after that we need to tabulate our observations our findings okay we need to tabulate our findings or observations that's how to conduct the activity my dear children so this is the way of doing our activity very pretty much simple now let's observe what these images first of all and we'll get to know we'll identify what are the stages already we have identified in several uh, you know like several animals we identified their patterns right so let's once again observe their patterns in their life cycles and we'll observe what are the special cases in here so my dear children first of all the life cycle of butterfly is given butterfly so this thing we discussed earlier but however we haven't got a you know like we haven't like in detail we haven't discussed just by looking at the life cycle we developed the like stages but however in detail we didn't discuss their internal and external features right we didn't discuss their features so now it's time to find out their special features in each of the life cycle stages okay now first of all my dear children these butterflies are going to start their life from their eggs you know that they are going to start their life from eggs then egg is getting converted into a larva this larva is especially called as a caterpillar this larva is specially called as and uh, called as a caterpillar so when you take the morphological features or any uh, other features between the eggs and the larva eggs are like pretty much inactive they receive nutrition within the egg okay within the liquid contained in the egg they will receive nutrition for their development then after that when some time is going to pass by very smaller creature is coming out small creature is coming out okay so that small creature gradually getting developed into a larva who is called as a caterpillar caterpillar right now if you take eggs definitely they these eggs they can't locomote or these eggs cannot locomote or they cannot move these eggs cannot move from one place to another they stick to a certain surface especially leaves on a plant okay then uh, nourishment is obtained within the egg that means inside okay if you take the caterpillar now caterpillar is way more different than the eggs caterpillar can locomote they have tiny legs within in the image also you can observe they have tiny legs they can move they can locomote from one place to another without any trouble and these caterpillars there is a special 
feature among the caterpillars to protect from predators, right? To protect from predators, these caterpillars have a poisonous, you know, like poison like hair kind of stuff around their body, right? When you come in contact with the caterpillar, that place is going to itch for a long time. It's because that there is a chemical substance within their within their hairs okay in these caterpillars that's a protective mechanism followed out by the caterpillars okay they have like hair like structures which are poisonous if you take the new nourishment pattern of a caterpillar nourishment pattern of a caterpillar they obtain nourishment by eating leaves and plant stuff. Most of the times they eat leaves. Okay. And the caterpillar is like a worm, right? Similar to a worm and with different, different colors. Okay. Their body color is way more different. Most of the times their body color is similar to the environment that they are living in. Right, most of the times their body color is somewhat similar to the environment they are living in. Means that they show camouflage. Okay, they show camouflage. So, my dear children, these are the very special features that we can identify within the caterpillar. Okay, caterpillar have defense mechanisms like having hairs which are ishi. Right, like having hairs which are poisonous. Then, my dear children, caterpillars nourish or they get nutrition from plant leaves most of the times. Okay. Then the other case is that if you take a caterpillar, we can observe different colors. However, their body color is somewhat similar to the color of the environment that they are living in. Most of the times, therefore, we can observe these caterpillars in greenish color. Okay, in greenish color. However, there are caterpillars which are in other types of colors. But most of the times, they are greenish color according to the environment that they are living on. Means that they show camouflage to protect from predators. So, these are the special key points that we can identify within caterpillars. So, after the caterpillar, caterpillar now is getting converted into a pupal stage, pupa. It's like a cocoon, right? It's like a cocoon, small cocoon, right? Within the cocoon, gradually this caterpillar is now developing into a butterfly. Within this cocoon, you can observe it. However, we can't observe it outside. We can see at the final stage of the, uh, you know, like when the final stage of the pupil, when the, uh, when there is the final, when the pupa is moving on to the uh, final stage, slightly we can observe, slightly we can observe the uh, nature of butterfly and its color. But however, at the beginning of the pupal stage, we can't observe any, right? We can't observe any special, specific features like colors and etc. Okay. Then pupal stage of the butterfly is very inactive, means that they can't, it can't locomote. It's been stuck to a certain surface, that's it, like the eggs. Okay. Like the eggs. They stuck to a certain surface and they are hanging. It's like a small bit of a fruit who is hanging on, which is hanging on a tree. Okay. Pupil stage. Pupil stage is very inactive and it, it is having, or oh, the caterpillar is living inside a cocoon. That's why it is called as a pupil stage. And my dear children, speciality is that if you take the pupa, right? The color of the pupa is also similar to the color of the environment so that it can't be clearly identified. Okay, most of the times. Right, 
most of the times the color will be similar however there are some certain cases that dissimilar colors also can be identified that's that depends on the nature of the butterfly okay that depends on the nature of the butterfly so pupil stage remember that's like an inactive stage we can't any see we can't see any uh, movements uh, you know like uh, if you take the living features we can't directly say whether this thing is living or not living like that it is an inactive stage of the life cycle of butterfly the pupil stage then finally my dear children that pupa is getting converted into a beautiful butterfly after some time so this pupa is getting you know like it's getting burst like hatching eggs okay and by bursting out the pupa the butterfly inside it comes out okay butterfly inside it comes out when it is near to you know when the butterfly is somewhat near to burst and come out then we can observe the butterfly within the pupa very clearly with the colors as well okay with the colors we can observe when it is near to burst down the pupa and come out the butterfly color of the butterfly can be clearly visible to the environment it is clearly visible to the environment okay so these are the special features and stages of the life cycle of butterfly my dear children the butterfly x is going to produce the larval stage which is which is also called as the caterpillar then caterpillar is getting converted into a pupa then pupal stage is getting converted into finally a beautiful butterfly so this is how the life cycle of a butterfly the stages of the life cycle of butterfly can be observed write them then my dear children images of these organisms we already discussed we identified what are the stages of these organisms separately here you can observe the life cycle of a frog life cycle of a rat life cycle of a cockroach and the life cycle of a mosquito right we identified these things right so now i am going to write down okay now i am going to write down each of their stages right while i am writing i am going to explain while i am writing i am going to explain their special features also so if you take a frog over here frog has limbs to locomote right they have toes or limbs to locomote the mode of locomotion is swimming and also hopping both can be taken no problem if you take an adult frog adult frog consumes air or it respire by using lungs okay and normally if you take a frog it is eating small insects they nourish by eating insects they get nutrition by eating insects insectivorous okay insectivorous okay they eat insects in order to maintain their nourishment and my dear children they have a wet skin and they would love to uh, play, they would love to behave on places or their habitat main habitat is you know like liquid areas or you know like wet areas okay wet areas are their habitats in adult frogs so here we can observe those key those key points if you take an adult frog now adult frog are going to adult frogs are going to lay eggs within or near to a water stream not to a water current you know like uh, like a pond where the water is somewhat still so that the eggs would not float here and there in that kind of a place 
adult frog is going to lay eggs okay adult frog is going to lay eggs at a place where the water is still not moving not on a stream right not on a stream not on a water current at a place where the water is somewhat still not moving right this adult frog is going to lay eggs right then after that these eggs are getting hatched and a tadpole is coming out tadpole is coming out so this is the one who is called as the tadpole if you take the structure of eggs these are very slimy and these things are getting stuck into a surface if you take a pond surface on the surface of the pond we can observe these eggs of the frogs okay eggs of frogs can be observed within the surface clearly can be visible those are like my dear children you know like if you take uh, uh, soap bubbles they have the same nature like soap bubbles these eggs the appearance is somewhat similar to soap bubbles these eggs of uh, these eggs of frogs okay and they can be observed within the surface not at the bottom but at the surface okay then these eggs are getting hatched now and a tadpole is getting produced so my dear children tadpole is like a small fish okay tadpole is like a small fish actually it's like it has a big body like this then a tail and also it has like these kinds of uh, you know those cannot be considered as uh, you know fins but however uh, fin like structures can be observed within the body okay fin like structures can be observed within the body so the main locomotion method of tadpole is swimming because it doesn't have any you know appendages to locomote on the land they don't have limbs okay they don't have limbs they have fins like structures like this in order to swim in water so there is a clear difference between their mode of locomotion between the adult and the tadpole adult frog is going to hop and swim to do both both the things can be observed both methods can be observed however a tadpole is only going to swim and it doesn't have any appendages on the body they have appendages similar to fins within their body tadpole okay and the uh, and there is another dramatical change my dear children dram dramatical morphological feature it's that these tadpoles are going to respire through gills not from lungs but however if frogs are going to respire through lungs so that's a clear difference between the tad tadpole and the uh, frog so if you take the nourishment these tadpoles are going to eat like you know most of the time smaller aquatic plants right like hydrilla algae those are the food for this tadpole main food types of fed tadpole then finally the tadpole is now developed into a frog by going through a several stages of life so we'll be discussing in detail about those structures and how it is getting converted into a frog from tadpole when we are discussing about the life cycle of a frog however up to now you remember this tadpole who is like a frog who is like a fish is converting into a frog undergoing in different stages of life okay 
there is a clear difference between their life cycle. A very clear difference can be observed. This is like a tadpole is like a fish. However, frog, it's not a fish. It's not like a fish. So there is a clear difference between their morphological features. The life cycle of a frog. Even we studied about that thing in the earlier chapter also. We looked at about we looked at several video clips regarding to the life cycle of a frog as well. Right. Then, my dear children, I'm going to erase this thing. The life cycle of a rat. So, this is the adult rat. Normally, adult rat. Adult rat is a omnivore organism. Right? It is an omnivore organism. They can eat anything. Okay, plant, animal, both the materials can be consumed by rat. Uh, most of the times these rats are going to, you know, like they are going to, uh, they are going to visit or they are going to be in places which are somewhat dark, right, which are somewhat darker and they live as packs, they live as packs and my dear children the other case is that if you take these uh, adult rat they are some they are somewhat bigger in size when you compare with the normal young rats okay when you compare the size size is somewhat larger in adult rat then these adult rats are going to produce infant rat infant rat child pups right infant rats are very smaller similar in body structure to the adult rat only difference is that they, they are they do, they do not have hairs on the skin okay within the first stages or within the first few days of their life infant rats do not have hair on the skin like the adult rats and adult rats their eyes are working very well they have limbs to run here and there they locomote quite fast but however infant rats are not like that they have limbs but however they are not locomoting that much quicker they are having protection of their mother adult rat mother okay adult rat mother is going to nourish these young infant rats by using its milk okay that's why these things are called as mammals. Then my dear children, unlike the adult rat, their main nutritional method is feed non mothers milk, okay, in faint rats. And they do not have hairs on the skin. However, they are body, their body structure is very similar to the what? Adult rat, okay, their body is very similar to the adult rat. Then if you take the young rat, young rat is very similar to the adult rat. Only difference is that their body size is somewhat smaller. That's it. All the other nourishment methods and the locomotive methods, their living uh, habitats, all are same. Only difference is the body size. So young rat only. The body size is getting changed. All the other features are similar to the adult rat. Okay. Then, my dear children, you can observe the cockroach. Starting from X, you can observe the nymph, then the cockroach. So, eggs of the cockroach, right, eggs of the cockroach, the adult cockroach lay eggs. They also would like to live in darker places. Most of the times they come out at night, okay. Most of the times they come out at night, means that they would like to live in darker places. Cockroaches also 
a car, uh, an omnivore organism can feed on any food item okay then uh, eggs it, it's going to lay eggs and like this younger very younger eggs are getting produced very younger uh, you know like nymphs are getting produced very young like at the born when they are going to born when you are when they are going to uh, born their structure is somewhat similar to the right somewhat similar to the nymph but however the body color is somewhat lighter than this right body color is somewhat lighter than this brownish color like the infants if you take the hatchlings if you take the hatchlings of the uh, cockroach their body color is somewhat light in color rather than these nymph and the cockroach then after time is going to pass by nymph is getting produced nymph has a good exoskeleton a cover within their back the good exoskeleton can be observed nymph is somewhat smaller to the cockroach nymph is somewhat smaller to the cockroach all the other features can be observed somewhat smaller has a good exoskeleton right and all the other features can be observed to the uh, similar to the cockroach okay but however nymph do not possess wings nymph do not possess wings a good exoskeleton can be observed nymph is getting converted into a cockroach by shedding the exoskeleton and growing you know feathers okay growing not feathers it should be wings right by growing wings and shedding their ex exoskeleton gradually the nymph is getting converted into a cockroach okay so that's how the cockroach is getting produced by the nymph. If you take the nourishment pattern, it's same as the adult cockroach, there is no difference. Okay. And the locomotive method is, you know, they can walk on the ground, they can run or move fast using the appendages, right, on the body. And my dear children, adult, there's a special day because of having wings. Adult cockroach can also fly, but however, nymphs can't fly because they do not have wings. Only the adult ones has the wings. Okay. Then that's about the cockroach. Then my dear children, you can observe the life cycle of a mosquito. Mosquito. So if you take the life cycle, start with eggs. then the larva then the pupa and finally the mosquito right mosquito so eggs like in the each of these cases like in each of these cases not on rat but each of these two cases like the frog and like the cockroach eggs you know inactive stage okay stuck to a certain surface especially here stuck to or floating on water here it's not stuck here these eggs are floating on water mosquito eggs are floating on water they are floating clearly on water. Then after that, when the eggs are getting hatched, the larva is getting produced. Larva is like a small bit of a worm, right? A small bit of a worm. They live totally inside the water, right? They live totally inside the water. They can't come out of water at the larval stage. If they come out from the water at the larval stage, definitely they would die. They can't survive without water at the larval stage, okay? And my dear children, after the larval stage, they converted or they get in converted, they come out of the water and within the surface of the water, right? Near to the surface of the water, 
this lava is getting converted into a pupal stage like in the butterfly right like in the butterfly getting converted into pupal stage which is also an inactive stage then within the pupa itself the mosquito is going to be produced same as similar to same as the butterfly seem very similar to the life process of butterfly okay only difference is that uh, here this one the mosquito they use water as a one medium or at uh, to live a one stage of their life cycle okay it's the main difference in mosquito right so these are the stages of life cycles of each of these animals which is given here in the earlier we discussed about the life cycle of butterfly and now each of these animals cockroach mosquito rat and tadpole uh, tadpole and frogs right not tadpole frog mainly it's called as the, as the frog right then so by looking at these right by looking at this you can clearly observe there are some certain organisms who is having right who is having what different morphological forms of stages their life stages have different morphological features way more different morphological features can be observed within their life cycles okay then there are some animals without different morphological forms of stages there are no such you know like if you take the stages of the uh, stage life cycle stages of the organism they are not that much different like by like by looking at each of the stage we can see that we can clearly see that ah this is this kind of an organism this is this kind of kind of an, kind of an organism like that we can we can see a direct relationship between each of the stages right right they have a similarity between the stages their body structure is similar their body appendages are similar right so like that way my dear children we can observe some organisms some animals within their life cycle their stages are not having that much of different morphological features they have similar morphological features in each and every stage of their life okay so who are the animals that shows different morphological features just by looking at one stage we can't say clearly like what kind of an organism is it so we identified those type of those types of organisms right in the earlier figures when we are discussing about the life cycles first and foremost organism is the butterfly my dear children right it's the butterfly first and foremost so butterfly when you take a butterfly in butterfly the adult butterfly it nourish itself by using nectar but however the young ones like the pupal stage pupal stage is inactive getting nourishment by using the cocoon within the cocoon it's getting its its nutrition on right and the earlier stage which is the caterpillar caterpillar is going to eat the plant parts especially plant leaves right caterpillar so my dear children there is a clear difference between the uh, nourishment pattern and if you take if you check the body structures butterfly and caterpillar way more different right caterpillar even it haven't got any wings or any other structures right it's just like a worm but however butterfly has wings it can fly so there are dramatical changes within their body structures so my dear children we can write 
The different morphological forms of stages can be observed in butterfly. 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 And in the same way, I told you that if you take a mosquito, mosquito also had the same structures. Very same, very similar to a butterfly, mosquito. Right? So mosquito, it had the same structure. Mosquito also had the same life cycles, the same life cycle, very pretty much similar to the butterfly, eggs, larval stage, then the pupal stage, then the mosquito. The adult mosquito can fly, but however, in the larval stage, they can't even, you know, like live without water. Adult mosquito can't even swim at all. They would drown. If they land inside the water, if they go inside the water, definitely they will drown and they will die. But however, love in the larval stage, there won't be any problem. They won't get any problem. Okay. So there is a clear difference between their morphological features. Okay. So mosquito is also a type of an organism which show dramatical changes within their morphological or within their life cycle and the morphological features from stage to stage within the life cycle is different. Then my dear children, frog. Frog is also the same. Frog, it, be, it breathes using lungs. It has appendages to hop. So it thrive on wet places lives on wet places right and sometimes these special frogs they are they, there are some special frogs who have a long sticky tongue right to catch insects so these organisms are insectivorous they eat insects so like that there are different features which can be observed within adult frog but however those features cannot be observed within the tadpole. Tadpole breathe using gills. So water is very important. 100% water is important. If water is not there, then the tadpole will die. However, for frog, it's not going to be a problem. They would like to live on wet places, but they do not need water. Right? I mean like they do not live in water. They need water, but they do not live within water. Okay, frogs. Tadpole, they live within water for sure. Without water, tadpole definitely die. It's going to die definitely. Okay, tadpoles. Then my dear children, tadpole feed on mainly, you know, smaller plants like hydrilla and algae. Okay, tadpole. And tadpole do not have appendages to walk or to hop. It has like fins like structure to swim on water. So there are pretty much way most different characteristics rather than the adult frog. So it has different morphological features compared to the uh, other stages of the life cycle. So frog is a good example for that. Okay. So butterfly, mosquito and frog are better examples for the organisms that show different morphological forms of stages. Rather than that, is there any other organisms? Right. Ah, there is another one, cockroach, right? Cockroach. So we studied that cockroach also, the nymph is also nymph is having you know appendages to walk, but however, cockroach having wings and appendages both. So nymph is having a good exoskeleton, but uh, if you take an adult cockroach, the exoskeleton is now being removed and wings have been adopted for the flying process. Right? 
then uh, nymph is somewhat uh, smaller in size but size but however cockroach is somewhat larger in size so is there any other organisms who are going to show somewhat different pol uh, somewhat different morphological features are than these four of course there are if you take a house fly house fly is also the same right they also show the same thing first of all they are born to the world as maggots maggots eggs are the ones which are coming first then eggs are getting converted into maggots. Then the maggots are the ones which are getting converted into a house fly, going through a several processes like in the mosquito. So they born from eggs, then behave as small tiny worms, then coming out to the world as a fly. So house fly also shows these different morphological features from stage to stage from stage to stage they are going to show different features house fly then there is another fly which is called as the fruit fly they lay eggs on fruits okay fruit fly similar to the house fly but somewhat somewhat different somewhat larger in size fruit fly okay they lay eggs on fruits by piercing the fruit they lay eggs then in the same way maggots are going to be produced within the fruit so it eat the fruit and develop gradually then finally converting into a fruit fly and comes out from the fruit okay fruit fly then there are some other types of ants also that go like in this kind of different stages in life cycle so there are different different examples for these things my dear children within home or at your home you can find out these other examples so i have filled out the table up to now by using six different animals okay so animals like butterfly mosquito frog cockroach and housefly and fruit fly these organisms normally show different features different features from one stage to another when they are complete in their life cycle okay now let's see what are the organisms or who are the organisms that show or that do not show different morphological features in life stages the first and foremost organisms that we learned is the rat and when i was starting the lesson part right at the beginning we discussed that if you take the life cycle of humans humans human life cycle is also similar to the life cycle of a rat right similar similar in pattern okay that means we are born as infants so infant oh, infant humans are some similar to the parents they are similar to the parents in shape only the size is getting changed when they grow up when and become a child then the size is only size is the only factor which is changed here all the other factors are 100 percent equal their locomotive structures feeding mechanism feeding uh, feeding way or way of getting nutrition then way of locomotion communication abilities right then the uh, you know handling information all of these things are similar all of these things are similar only the infants now infants are like they are being born to the world and uh, within uh, they are born to the world new to so they have to be adapted to the world before they are doing anything so infants are also but however infants are also similar to the uh, adult humans they have similar body structures right they have similar body structures only thing that different only different thing is their body size body size is different but however all the other morphological features can be clearly seen within the adult and as well as within the infant child as well 
So my dear children, humans undergo in a life cycle process where we can't observe any dramatical changes or in, without any uh, difference between the morphological features from one stage to another. So human, we can mention it here. Then my dear children, we studied about these organisms. So I am going to provide you some other examples as well. If you take life cycle of a cat, they come, they come to the world as kittens. kittens. These kittens are very similar to the cats, adult cats. Only the size is getting uh, changed, right? Only the size is getting changed. It's, uh, the puppies, puppies are also the same, right? When you compare the morphological features of adult dog and a puppy, both of these organisms have same or similar features, pretty much similar features. Locomotive method, their body structures, uh, body structures means not the size. I'm talking about the other fact, other factors like a number of appendages, having a tail, skin color. Skin color can also be changed, but however, the skin pattern, like you know, having hairs on those, these kind of stuff, these are similar to the adult dog, right? So cats and dogs, lions, tigers, monkey, these organisms they do not show any dramatical changes from one stage to another in their life cycle. So these organisms, my dear children, they do not show or these life cycles are without different morphological forms of their stages. So we can write other examples, cats, dogs, monkey right monkey and you know we'll take another one we took rat right okay so monkey then uh, lion lion and tiger is also correct these organisms these organisms, they do not have different morphological forms of stages within their life cycle. All of these infants are similar to the adult, okay, similar to the adult, similar in morphological features to the adult. But however, only thing which is getting changed is the body size, okay. Body size is the one which is only getting changed. So my dear children, now we have identified different life cycles of different animals and from that we identified that there are some animals with different morphological forms of stages and there are some animals without different morphological forms of stages. Okay, right then. You would have noticed that there are no different morphological forms in different stages of rat and human. Yes, so within rat and human, there are no any, right, different morphological forms in the stage of rat and human. Okay, we discussed that thing. There are morphological changes in different stages of cockroach, butterfly, mosquito and frog. Uh, but however, we can observe morphological features, different morphological features within these organisms like cockroach, butterfly, mosquito, frog, housefly, fruit fly. Within those organisms, we can observe dramatical changes within their morphological features from one stage to another. Okay. Then, some animals, example rat, born morphologically similar to their parents but smaller, but smaller in size. So some animals, like in the earlier case which we discussed, not like rats, it's given as just one single example, but not rats, not only rats, humans, cats, dogs, monkey, lion, 
tiger all of these organisms right and there are several other examples as well these when you take these organisms the young ones or the infants of these organisms are very similar very similar to the adult but however size is the only factor which is getting changed size is different but the morphological features are similar in all aspects okay some species have slightly complicated life cycles that is they go through different morphological forms before becoming an adult there are some species they have slightly complicated life cycles complicated means my dear children one life cycle is totally i mean like one life cycle stage is totally 100% different than the another stage totally 100% different by looking at that stage even we can't conclude whether this organism is going to be this kind of an organism and the at the end for an example butterfly frog right if you don't know about the caterpillar well then you might think that this is a worm it's not going to convert into a butterfly when you are a child imagine now you are a child right in your childish age right you never knew that the caterpillars are going to convert into a butterfly right when you go to grade 4 3 4 5 and those within those grades uh, at those grades you identified that the caterpillars are the ones who are getting developed gradually into a butterfly in your preschool and grade 1 2 right like in grade 1 and 2 in your preschool you didn't knew that caterpillar is going to produce a beautiful butterfly right it's because that by just looking at a caterpillar we can't say that a butterfly is going to be produced right their morphological features are pretty much different so they have very complicated life cycles somewhat complicated life cycles from one stage to another they have very much different uh, morphological features another example is frog how can we say that the tadpole is going to be produced into a developed frog if you don't know like i told you that i had the same experience when i was a child right i i i i i think that you guys are also having the same uh, experience when you guys were child right if uh when if there is a pond or any other uh, water restructure within your garden then you might come across with these incidents huh? you might have come across with these incidents so our parents are the ones who are going to tell that finally these are eggs of or these uh, finally this is not a frog right this is not this is not a fish finally this tadpole is going to become a frog and eat your fish within the pond right that's how we come to know that the tadpole is getting converted into a frog so they have complicated life cycles other than these organisms which we mentioned earlier like rat human lion tiger those kind of organisms other than those kind of organisms some organisms they have somewhat complicated life cycles somewhat complicated life cycles right their life stages are pretty much different from one to another from one to another their life cycle is pretty much different okay right then so some species have slightly complicated life cycles my dear children they go through different morphological forms before becoming an adult before be becoming an adult they go in different morphological forms okay they go different they go in different morphological forms right then some animals such as butterfly mosquito cockroach frog are hatched from eggs as the nutrients in the eggs are not sufficient for them to become an adult 
they go through different stages. So nutrients are nutrients in the eggs are not sufficient. So they go in different stages. Like in the earlier case we discussed in the earlier example in the earlier slide we discussed we discussed that these organisms they hatching out from the egg and they go in different different stages of life. Right? They go different different morphological. They have different different morphological features in each of the life stages. And finally, they are becoming an adult. During these stages, most of the feeding is done for them to become an adult. Going through different stages in the life cycles ensures also the adaptations of the stages for different environments secure their survival. Now, I told you that different adaptations, adaptations are pretty much important for the survival of these organisms. So I told you that if you take a caterpillar, they have, you know, they show most of the times camouflage. So it, that is a special adaptation for their survival. They have hair, uh, they have hairs which are having some poison, right? So it's a adaptation to protect from predators. Okay, adaptation to protect from predators. Then if you take an adult frog, they are in insectivorous, means that they catch insects to feed or get to get nutrition. To, to in catch insects, they have long and sticky, uh, long and sticky tongue, right? So like that way, there are different, different morphological features and special adaptations that can be observed within these organisms with the, within uh, you know like uh, some organisms only we can see this thing in some organisms we can observe these special adaptations so these adapt adaptations are pretty much important very important for their survival within the environment okay my dear children so within the environment these things are these adaptations shown by each and every stage of their life cycle is very important right very important for their survival otherwise if they didn't have those kinds of kinds of adaptations then there might be a trouble that in the sensitive stage of the life life cycle they might die and these organisms will not be able to find in our earth okay so as they have those kind of special adaptations, the life is getting continued in our earth. Right then. So my dear children, by looking at these things, we can see that some organisms go in dramatical changes within their life stages and some they don't. Right. So... The next point given, see, there are different stages in human life cycle. Now, within the image given here, you can observe the different stages of human life cycle. The infant, then the child, somewhat younger child, then even more younger child and the teenager and then finally the adult. Okay, so you can observe the several stages. This is the newborn, right? This is the newborn child, the infant. So these are like up to one to five years. This is like nine, ten, five, like five to twelve years. Then this is like thirteen to twenty years. Then this is like greater than twenty, twenty-five, and so on. Okay. So by looking at these figures, you can see that, my dear children, if you take the human life cycle, human life cycle is very similar from adult. I mean, like their morphological features are very similar to the morphological features of the infants, starting from so infants to the child is, uh, child's, okay? From infant to the child, their morphological features are very much similar to the adult. Then, let's see what other things given. 
So there are different stages in human life cycle. Although infant, right? Although infant is differ in body size, he has similar appearance of the adult. So as you can see here within the figure also, it concludes infant has the same, right? Appearance as the adult. The infant go through the life stages, childhood, adolescence, and becomes an adult. Adolescence means the stage where the secondary sexual characteristics appear, and the stage where a child is becoming an adult. Okay. Normally, this thing happens in our teenage time period from 13 to 19 time period this thing happens for human beings normally usual average right usually i mean like as an average from 13 to 19 time period this thing happen as an average for 80 percent of the normal population of humans the adolescence comes between the ages between the age of 13 to 19 there might be certain other you know like special cases but however as an average from 13 to 19 that's the uh, so that, that that's the that time period is the time period where a human being getting developed into an adult right getting developed into an adult that's the starting that's the starting age of the adult period from 13 to 19 time period. We are saying that this at that time period, human is getting sexually matured, sexually matured, right? Means that the human has the ability to reproduce after the adolescence, okay? Right then. So, infant go through the life stages, childhood adolescence and becomes an adult stages of human life cycle have approximately the similar morphological features that they will have as human adults so like i said my dear children if you take human life cycle stages of human life cycle is pretty much similar to the adult only thing is the size difference. Only difference is the size difference. Size is the only difference that we can clearly observe within the life stages. All the other factors are pretty much similar to the adult, right? Nourishment pattern, right? I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the uh, infant, but however, from a child to an adult, their nourishment pattern, way of locomotion, speaking. Then uh, if speak means communication. Then, my dear children, uh, you, if you take the uh, locomotion, mode of locomotion, right? All of these things are very similar. I mean, they are 100% equal to the adult. No any difference at all. So, these, we, human, we are not going to have somewhat complicated life, cy life cycles like the organisms that we discussed earlier. However, there are some organisms, they show different stages and they have somewhat quite, you know, complicated life cycles. But our life cycle is not that much complicated, right? From beginning to the end, our life cycle is, you know, it's flowing like a river in a continuous way, right? Only thing which is getting different is the size of the body. That's it. Right then. So, my dear children, now we identified that there are way more different morphological features between the stages of life and there are some organisms that do not have that much of differences. They are similar to the adult and the infants, okay, and infants and adults are similar in, similar in morphological features. However, the body size is getting changed. But there are some certain organisms, these organisms way more different than the adult, okay. 
they pass through different stages, somewhat having a complicated life stages in order to convert to an adult. So, hence you may have noticed that some organisms who undergo changes with different morphological features, while some similar to the morphological features in their different stages of life. So, it's simple. We discussed that thing, right? Then, you would have noticed that the eggs of the butterfly hatched and a larva is born. After some days, larva becomes a pupa and later on it becomes a beautiful butterfly with colorful wings. See my dear children, the speciality of these things, I have, you know, like highlighted the each area to show you that these areas. See, eggs. Then lava is born. Then converting into a pupa. Then finally to a beautiful butterfly. Okay. So each of these stages are way more, pretty much different than the other stage. Features bear by butterfly not equal to the features bear by pupa or to the caterpillar. Different, different features. So my dear children, these stages of life cycle, different morphological features. These stages of life cycle have different morphological features. It's very clear to us that they have different morphological features. Then, this is pretty much important. The process with different morphological changes in different stages of life, life cycle that some living organisms go through to become adults is referred to as metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. So, if a certain organism has different, different morphological features, different different features right different features from one stage to another different morphological features from one stage to another if they have those kinds of features those organisms are referred to as metamorphic organisms they undergo in metamorphosis right metamorphosis they are undergoing metamorphosis. So, this is a very special term, metamorphosis. So, if they are, if they are going to change their body, right, if they are going to change their body structure from one stage to another dramatically, if two different stages have way more different, okay, way more different morphological features, then, my dear children, these organisms are undergoing in metamorphosis. So, here the process with different morphological changes in different stages of life that some living organisms go through to become adults is referred to as metamorphosis. This is called as, my dear children, metamorphosis. So, butterflies and organisms who go in metamorphosis. Mosquito is an organism who go in metamorphosis. Frog is an organism, right? Frog is an organism who undergoes in metamorphosis. But humans, they do not show metamorphosis. So, metamorphosis means when you check the life cycle, if there are dramatical changes, if there are different, different morphological changes between different stages, then my dear children, these organisms undergoing metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. If the infants are similar to the adults but only differ in size, then my dear children, those organisms do not show metamorphosis. So, animals like rat, man, who do not show metamorphological differences, right, in life cycles. So, these animals like and man and rat, 
they do not show morphological morpholo uh, morphological features right different morphological features so therefore these animals do not show metamorphosis animals like rat then animals like you know human lion dog cat monkey those organisms do not show metamorphosis they do not have different morphological stages within their life cycle so my dear children these organisms once again who are having different stages with different morphological features in simple if the life cycle is somewhat complicated rather than the others then those organisms undergoing metamorphosis metamorphosis right okay then so my dear children within this chapter we studied about the animals life cycle of animals and specially we identified that with when we are checking about the life cycle of animals we identified that these organisms there are some organisms who undergo in metamorphosis metamorphosis means they have different stages of life cycles with dif different stages of life cycle with different morphological features and there are some organisms there are some animals who do not go in metamorphosis if they do not go in metamorphosis their infants are similar to the size and the shape of uh, to the shape of the uh, adult but different in size that's it shape is similar but the size is different however if a certain animal undergoes in metamorphosis then my dear children from one stage to another their morphological features are going to change 100% right 100% their morphological features are going to change they have slightly complicated lifestyle or life cycle so animals like butterfly frog mosquito housefly fruit fly these organisms undergo in metamorphosis then my dear children animals like rat human then cat dog these organisms or these animals they do not undergo in metamorphosis right then so these are the special key points key things that we are going to learn within this chapter within next chapter we'll be discussing further things related with the metamorphosis right so there are like two types of metamorphosis so we'll be discussing about those two types of metamorphosis and so on with the lesson so stay with me with the end of the lesson to get to know about these things so we'll be winding up the second chapter from this point onwards and we'll be starting our fresh new chapter to discuss about types of metamorphosis and the other contents within the lesson